Welcome back to the Revit 2012 architecture tutorials brought to you by CADEase.com. I explained to you a few things about the interface in the last video. I just wanted to um, explain a few more things to you before we get started drawing. This is just a quick, simple project I drew up real fast. It's nothing, nothing special. It's probably not even architecturally correct. I just wanted to show you a few things. Um, first of all, I wanted to show you the view control bars. Remember, this is your view. All these in a project browser are all views, different ways to view your model. That includes schedules, legends, everything, even sheets are technically views, different ways to view your model. Uh, of course, you don't edit in your sheets, that's primarily just for plotting. Um, just wanted to show you this bar. If you look at the dimensions, everything is annotative. So, this is how I change my scale. If I want to change it from an eighth to three quarters, let's say, see how tiny the callouts for the elevations, the tags, and the dimensions got. Very tiny. You can see overall how tiny they are. If I go back to a quarter inch, you can see they're a little bit bigger. That's because when you put it on a sheet, it's set up so that all your text, no matter what scale you're at, will be the same height. So if I was to print this on a three quarter of an inch per foot scale, the text would have to be that tiny. That way when you plotted it on a sheet, it would be at the correct height, usually about three thirty seconds of an inch tall. If I plot a quarter inch scale next to a half inch scale, the text will be the same height. And that's architecturally correct, so Revit takes care of that for you. So there's your scale button. This right here is your detail level. I showed you a little bit about this before. You can see right now you don't see too much detail. If I go to median detail, you can see more of the layers of the walls. Not to be confused with AutoCAD layers, these are wall layers uh, such as stud, gypsum, brick, air gap, stuff like that. Those are called layers in Revit. And there's also a fine. I don't really have anything set up for that. But you can definitely tell the difference between medium and coarse. On a big huge project, coarse will be better. It's kind of a stripped down version. It helps with performance. Um, if you don't have a big project, like this is such a tiny project, I just leave it on medium most of the time. This right here is your visual style. It can best be seen in 3D view. And let me also show you this. In AutoCAD, if I was to hold down shift and middle button, or use the view cube, which it's missing here, you could turn a plan view into a 3D view. Well, you cannot do that in Revit. You must open a 3D view. A plan view will always be a plan view. And all you do is hit the little house right there default 3D view, there it is. Now you can hold your shift key down in your middle button and scroll around and there is the familiar view cube. You can also grab that. I just do shift middle button, it seems easier. So visual styles, and again this is just something quick I just threw together. We have wireframe. You can basically see through the building. Hidden line. Just going to cover up anything that can't be see, seen through. Now of course you can still see my railing right there because my window is clear. So you can see my little hatch pattern for my concrete floor. This wood floor is in there. So that's hidden view. Shaded. Now of course I have my shadows turned off. I'll get to that in a second. Consistent colors. And of course realistic. Now realistic will tax your system. You can see how long it's taken to get to realistic but it puts all the actual patterns and uh, textures on your building there. I usually like to keep it in hidden line. Sometimes I'll go to consistent colors if I just want to get a little bit of color depth there. This right here is your sun path. You've got different sun settings that you can set up and feel free to look at that. Um, you can turn on your sun path. I'm just going to use a default. There's my path. And I can of course turn it right back off again. Shadows on or off. See, there's my shadows. My sun's defaulting up over here apparently. And that's all in the sun settings. See, the sun's consistent. As I turn the building, the sun will stay the same. You can do solar studies, all that good stuff. That's your rendering button. If you wanted to render it, we'll get into rendering later, but those are your rendering options. Just wanted to show those to you. And feel free if you want to go ahead and explore these things. It's no problem. Uh, crop view. Let me go ahead and go back to my floor plan. Just to show crop view, uh, right now I'll hit it on but nothing's going to happen. This right here shows my crop region which is way out here. That's why the crop view didn't work. 
if I just wanted to show, I don't know, the top half of this building and that's it in my view. There you go. If I turn crop view off, there it is. Crop view, the crop region stays. I can also turn the crop region off. So that's all crop view does. This is a temporary hide ice light button. I didn't have anything selected yet. Say I just wanted, I don't know, these exterior walls. Well, I can select these exterior walls and I can come here and I can isolate them. I can isolate by category. Now category would be the wall category, so every wall would be isolated. If I just want the exterior walls, I'll just choose those elements and they're isolated. These are just little blue cyan deal to tell you that you're in that mode. And I can come in here and I can draw and do whatever I have to do. And I can either apply it, which would leave it this way, or I can reset it to what it was and that brings it back. By the same token, I can also come in here and hide that element or that category. But if I hide it, well then, there you go. It's gone. I'm going to go ahead and apply it this time. So now that wall is gone in this view, it is hidden. If I want to get it back, what do I do? Well, that's this next button. It reveals anything that's hidden. So there you go. Reveal hidden elements. And I can come in here. I can edit in this mode. I can draw in this mode. I can move things. I can do whatever I want. Of course, I'm going to get some errors there. Let's hit cancel. So I have some targets that are going to be detached. But if I wanted to edit something and then I can turn this button back off, it'll stay hidden. Or I can even select an object, unhide it, and then get out of that mode and there it is, it's back again. So that's how you unhide things. You just go right here to reveal all your hidden things that are in that view. So that's your view bar, your view control bar. Um, I also mentioned something about keystrokes. I'm just going to show you this real quick. If I type in KS, which is default for keystroke, these are my keystrokes. I can set up keystrokes for anything I want. I'll just go down here to the ones I already have currently set up. These are all the things I have set up for keystrokes, uh, like create similar. CS. I'll show you that real quick. If you click on an element, like that wall, I can right click and go to create similar. And that will let me create another one of those walls. I have that exact same wall and I can create it. Well, to me, right clicking took too long, so I just type in CS. No enter key, no space bar, just CS, and that's it. And I'm right into create similar. So. That's how you do your keystrokes. And right now, instead of hitting the delete button up here, I'm just hitting DD for delete. That's my keystroke that I set up for myself. Seems to be pretty easy. So there's your keystrokes. Uh, another thing about keystrokes, I'll show you real quick. Got this off of one of the forums I'm associated with. Um, it's a great tip. If you know, I have a lot of things that are repeated. And I'll go to, let's say, edit. Edit rails, edit profiles, edit sketch, edit shading, you know. Anything that is an edit, you can do the same keystroke for, because Revit's going to know if you have a floor um, selected and you hit EE for edit, it's going to know you want to edit a floor. It's not going to put you in a wall edit mode. So depending on what you have selected, Revit will know which edit to go to. And the same thing for finish. When you edit something, you got to finish the sketch. So all these finishing modes, there's more up here, I went down too far, are all FF. So no matter what I'm doing, and no matter what I'm editing, if I hit finish, it knows to finish whatever is being edited. So Rivet's pretty smart that way. You don't have to have different shortcut keys for every finish mode or edit mode. It knows what you're talking about by, how, by what you select first. So that's pretty nice. Uh, now I just wanted to give you a quick overview on families. Families you can think of in its most basic form like AutoCAD blocks. Um, that's not to say that they are like blocks. They are very smart. They're created from family templates. You can have face-based, floor-based, um, wall-hosted, ceiling-hosted, I mean line-based. There's literally a ton of, um, of families. Let me see. I can show you real quick. We'll go to New Family. And here's all your family templates. Those are all the family templates you have. Structural, windows, site, profiles, plumbing fixtures, you've got electrical, lighting. Not to be confused or not to be left out, you've got all these annotation families. You've got, you know, different call out different conceptual masses. You've got 
these are all the templates that you would, if you wanted to, uh, let's say, create some casework, you would start with this casework family. If you knew it was going to be wall-based, like a cabinet or an upper, you would want it to be a wall-based family. That way it will only go on a wall. It will not let you put it anywhere but a wall, which is how you want it to be because uppers don't go on anything but walls. So we'll get into all that, but I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about families. There's system families, which are pretty much everything that the, um, defines the model. Walls, floors, roofs, ceilings, stairs, annotation, and views. And that's right, views are families too. Uh, those are system families that cannot be changed, they can be edited, but a wall is a wall is a wall, it will always be a wall. Then you have host families, which is everything else, doors, windows, fixtures, furniture. Um, for instance, if I was going to draw a door, I have to have a wall because this is a wall hosted family. I can't just put a door in nothing. I can't put it in a stair. I can't put it on top of a bathtub. It has to be in a wall because a wall is what hosts the door. So just keep that in mind. Um, let's see, I also want to get into file types. There's four different types of file types in Revit. There's an RVT, which is your Revit project. That's your main model. You've got your template, which I talked about briefly. You want to create your, like your company template with all your settings. That's an RTE extension. You've got RFA, which is your family, which we just talked about. And those family templates I just showed you are RFTs. So those are the different types of file types in Revit. Uh, but just remember your model is your RVT. That's your main one. So that kind of goes a little bit deeper into Revit. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and start drawing just a very simple two-story house, little one-bedroom loft type, type house, throw a fireplace in it, and just start modeling and just get you drawing. So join me for the next video. Thanks for joining us. Come visit us at caddies.com. Thank you.